The Canadian Union of Public Employees filed a lawsuit this week against Premier Kathleen Wynne, Finance Minister Charles Sousa, and former Energy Minister Bob Shirelli in a bid to stop any further sale of Ontario's shares in Hydro One, that is the province's electricity distribution company. Could QP succeed in the courts again, where protest and opposition politics have not? Joining us now for a look at the past, present, and future of the Hydro One story, here's Robert Benzi. He's the Queen's Park Bureau Chief at the Toronto Star. And Rob, it's great to have you back here at TVO. Thanks, Steve. Rob, let's just start with a little review here. We want to go back into history a little more than a year when the Hydro One stock was just about to be sold, uh, the government says, in order to fund transit infrastructure projects, help pay down provincial debt. Here's how Ashley Chinati from the National Post also reported on this at the time. Financial Accountability Officer Stephen LeClaire's inaugural report slams the Liberal government's plans to sell 60% of Hydro One as a short-sighted cash grab. The Treasury will forego 60% of the current $750 million dividend Hydro One pays the province each year. In all, the province will lose between 300 and 500 million per year once the full 60% stake is sold off, LeClaire found. That's after accounting for savings on things like interest payments on the current debt. So we see here the two sides sort of taking shape. So let's go through this. On the one hand, the positive financial news on the partial privatization of the shares of Hydro One are what? It's $9 billion once they've sold 60% of it. They've only sold 30% of it so far. And of that $9 billion, $5 billion is going to pay down Hydro One's debt. So it's really only a $4 billion net gain. Plus, there's some tax changes that will benefit the government in the short term um, uh, in the way that, uh, that the new entity will be taxed. But I think it's more the government it wants to be seen to be repurposing an asset they don't want to be saying they don't want to, to like to call it a sell off they mm -hmm. like to say no we're just we're investing pu the, these dollars in other public infrastructure monetizing the value mm -hmm. of there it. you go hmm. okay and has the government so far been satisfied with what the street has offered in terms of uh, you know what they're paying per share and so on yeah i think the first two 15% tranches, as they call them, mm -hmm. uh, have been pretty successful. It's trading in around $22 range or whatever right now. And I think that they're, they're happy with it. And, and Hydro One, as a company, I think, as a private company, can be a better uh, entity than it was as a public company. It was not a particularly well-run utility. There were a lot of problems there. Customer service was a, always an issue, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not a direct customer service company. Most, most of it is transmission lines. It's 97% of the, of the electricity grid is, is Hydro One's wires all across Ontario. But I think there, there is an opportunity for, uh, through privatization, for it to be a better-run company. But it'll be a less accountable com co company to the public. Let me just do one more follow-up on the issue of cost. So those who say as they did when the 407 highway was sold. You gave it away for a yeah. song, it's a fire sale. They can't really say that this time because they're getting good value for the, for the shares? Well, I mean, they are saying that it, they're still giving it away because they sh they're saying they shouldn't sell it at all. It's a better deal than the, than the 407 deal, but that really isn't saying much Okay, because <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah, I think the, the, yeah. The, yeah. the verdict is in on yeah. that one. The downside of selling off 60% of Hydro One, which is the long-range goal, what's the downside of doing it? Well, the downside of doing it is that it's against Premier Kathleen Wynne's brand. I mean, the Liberal Party in, used to oppose the sale of Hydro One. And in fact, when former Premier Ernie Eves uh, and former Premier Mike Harris and the Tories announced in 2001 and then 2002 that they were going to privatize Hydro One, all of it, all 100% of it, um, that Liberals were against it. Then leader Dalton McGuinty was against it. And Kathleen Wynne, elected as a backbencher in 2003, was against it too. I mean, that was a, it was an issue, even though the Tories had abandoned that plan by 2003. Uh, it, had, it was still an issue in the out there that people were against uh, the privatization of this utility. But in fairness, that was an attempt to sell off the entire company. Yep. This is an attempt to sell off 60% of the company retaining 40% for public ownership. And retaining control, too, because it would still be the majority shareholder, the, the, sorry, the biggest single shareholder. The, you, you know, one private company couldn't buy 60% of, of the shares, the way that it's structured. So the province will still be the single yes. largest single shareholder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the downside that you expressed off the top. We have the upside, which is the money coming in, still retaining some ownership. On balance, is there a verdict in yet on whether this is the right thing to do? Uh, I don't think so uh, yet. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's, a, it's the voting issue that some people think it is. The problem for the government is people's electricity bills are going up. So it's a, it's a really facile thing for, for opposition politicians to say, look, it's, uh, they're selling off Hydro One and your hydro prices are going up. So that you know, ratepayers can say, well, I wonder if they're related. They're not. 
there's a, they have nothing to do with one another, but it's a really easy thing for opponents of the sale to say this is directly linked to prices going up. It, 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 and the government has no really good message to, to uh, counter that. Well, except facts. Yeah. Does the fact, I mean, it, it's either true or it isn't yeah. that the partial privatization. We're in a post truth world. <laughs> don't tell me that. I hate knowing that. I know that's true, but I don't like that. No, I still, I'm old fashioned enough that yeah. I still want to be in a, in a real truth yes. world. So is there any evidence that the partial privatization of Hydro One is leading directly to higher electricity prices? No. And in fact, Ed Clark, the Premier's uh, unpaid uh, business guru, who uh, former chair of uh, CEO of uh, TD Bank, he says that hydro prices could actually maybe not rise as fa fast. He actually says they could get lower because if Hydro One is a better run utility, a better run company, it may be able to pass savings on to consumers. Well, let's figure that out. I is there any evidence for the suggestion that if you bring some quote unquote private sector discipline to a previously 100% owned crown corporation, that you can in fact have a better run company? I think, I think yes. I think, uh, uh, um, I'm not sure, I, I, I example, good examples off the top of my head, on Canada Post, I don't know if it's, Air Canada, Air Canada used to be a crown corporation, mm -hmm. I think it's better than it was when it was government owned. Um, CN Rail, Via. CN Rail, yeah. Via, things like that. Um, but you, have, you also have situations, British Rail, the, the Virgin Rail is a disaster in the UK compared to what, when it was a crown, a crown asset. So I think it's, it's sort of six of one, half dozen the other. Jury's still out on yeah. that one. Uh, can you tell whether or not the public will you know, see any benefit or will derive any benefit from the fact that this company will now be 60% held and ultimately in private hands? Well, I mean, you could argue that if you are a, uh, a um, uh, if you have a pension and your pension fund invests in it and it's a good return, then then it'll be good for you as a as an investor um, uh, to to have a share in this in this company if the prices continue to go up, and I, th I think that they will. Um, but in terms of uh, of uh, no, will the grid be better? I, I don't know. It might be. It might not be. I, I, again, I, I don't think we can say for sure yet. How about complaints? I remember when Hydro One was 100% owned by the government of Ontario, complaints were off the charts. Yep. What's it like now? They're still, they're, they're a little more responsive. I mean, we had a story just this week where they had, they, they had to uh, uh, turn back on the power for 1,400 homes uh, that they turned off for unpaid bills. You know, in winter in Ontario, that's, that's a tough time to turn people's power off. Okay. I think that before it was a, such a monolithic bureaucracy uh, that it, it wasn't as responsive. I mean, the old ombudsman, Andre Marin, went to town on Hydro One uh, mm. on its terrible customer service. I think now it's not going to be under the auspices of the ombudsman, so we, we don't know. But uh, it, it, it seems that it may be a little bit better than it was. But I'm not sure if that's because of privatization or if it's just because mm. it was so lousy before it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, the big news this week is that QP, the Canadian Union of Public yeah. Employees, is taking the premier and two of her senior cabinet ministers to court. And here's what they say about that. The Canadian Union of Public Employees is following through on its threat to sue Premier Kathleen Wynne and two cabinet ministers to halt the further privatization of Hydro One. QP claims the government was in a conflict in holding political fundraisers, including one event for which tickets cost $7,500 each, in which cabinet ministers hobnobbed with investment bankers vying for lucrative contracts to handle the privatization. The Ministry of Energy said there was nothing improper about the fundraising. Quote, the Integrity Commissioner has already reported on this matter and confirmed that there was no wrongdoing. Our government is focused on building Ontario up, oh, they love that expression, <laughs> and helping people in their everyday lives. Broadening the ownership of Hydro One is a crucial part of that plan, end quote. So reports our buddy Fergie in your newspaper. Why is QP taking this approach? Uh, well, it's, we've seen this movie before. It worked in 2002 when the Tories tr were trying to sell Hydro One. Uh, QP went to court and was successful. Uh, QP and a bunch of unions mm -hmm. went and they were successful. So much so that it, 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 it forced the government to change the law. The government of the day had to change the law so they could then sell Hydro One. Uh, and then they changed their mind about, about doing it anyway. But I think that the court case at that time uh, kind of spearheaded the outcry against the sale so that then Premier Ernie Eves in, in January 2003, I guess it was, said, no, we're not doing it. So is the thinking here, we'll put some legal heat on the government and maybe that'll help change their minds? I think so. I think it's also, uh, QP is a big supporter of the New Democrats, and it's, this has been uh, NDP leader Andrew Horvath's uh, sort of pet project since Wynn announced it. She's really seized upon this one. And to the NDP's credit, they have been consistent on this. They were against the sale of Hydro One in the early 2000s under Howard Hampton. They're against it now. 
The Tories in 2001, 2002 wanted to sell it. The Liberals were against it. Now the Liberals want to sell it, and the Tories are against it. So I think the New Democrats are the only ones who have actually stayed the same on, on this one. I can't keep up here. Everybody's going to have a program every, to change, exactly. yeah, figure out what everybody's doing. Okay, they did say, you know, Rob did say in his piece that the integrity commissioner did look into this. And what did the integrity commissioner that's find? A, that's a little selective. The, the, the Ministry of Energy's it, yes, J. David Wake, the integrity commissioner, looked into this and found there was no wrongdoing. However, he also said, but there is, uh, there, there should be tighter uh, um, uh, loopholes around these. Like, loopholes should be closed. Now, remember, fundraising laws, laws are changing anyway in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. They've already changed. They'll be take effect on January first. So I think that this, this will, this kind of thing couldn't happen again. But he, uh, Wake, thought that there were, there were problems with the law and thought there should have been loopholes should have been tightened. So no technical violation, no. but optic, optics, optics are not good. Yeah, yeah. He said there could have been a benefit. They didn't break the law, but there could, there could, it could be seen to be a benefit to these ministers going to these fundraisers and hobnobbing with, uh, with in Fergie's words, hobnobbing with, uh, with uh, investment bankers. Was that Fergie's word or yes. was that Cupy's word? I don't know if it's Cupy's word. It's a good yeah. one, whoever it was. One. It is indeed. Uh, okay, I know you're not a lawyer. I play just, one on television. You just play though. one on TV. I know you stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> but I wonder if you've talked to people who have sort of done a bit of a legal analysis of CUPE's case here and whether or not they think there's a genuine legal case to be made here. Uh, the government's lawyers don't think there is, and CUPE's lawyers think that there is. I, 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 so it's, 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 you know, it's going to have to go to the courts to, to decide for sure. I'm not sure that this will succeed. Because uh, they're, 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 it, it's a mis misfeasance case that they're, they're calling it, not, not malfeasance. malfeasance, misfeasance. So I think it's going to be tricky. And 30% of, of Hydro One has already been sold. So it's, it's only 30% to point. go. Yeah, only 30. And it's half, half of the, the first, you know, if it, I mean, they say they're not going to sell the remaining 40%, but who knows. Um, so I don't know. I, I think that it, 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 it's going to be risky to say to 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 to, to see if 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 the, if the court will rule in favor of CUPE. I mean, the liberals say, look, we ran in 2014 saying we are going to monetize assets. That is and true. They didn't say specifically Hydro One, though. And given that they had been against it for so many years, no one thought that they would ever sell it. Mm -hmm. So. It's a little bit, you know, they're, they're a little bit playing fast and loose on that one. However, elected governments have a right to make decisions. And do we want the courts over, overturning those kinds of decisions all the time? Hmm. And something like this, it's, it's, I mean, it is a government asset. If the government has the right to sell it, they can. I mean, but opponents say, well, look, they can only sell it once. And once it's gone, it's gone. Well, that's why I guess the mayor of Toronto decided not to sell off chunks of Toronto, Toronto Hydro. Because yeah. he said once, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Having he's said that, tolls instead on the highway. That is true. <laughs> once... Can you imagine a scenario here whereby the government has sold off the remaining 30% it intends to sell, and then the court decision comes in after that saying, uh, actually, you weren't allowed to do yeah. that? What I, happens then? I don't, I don't know what happened. I, you can't go buy all the shares back. The, no. the value, it's, it's, it'll be $9 billion or more by then mm -hmm. uh, in value. So I don't know. That's a very interesting kind of conundrum for it. might just be a, a symbolic victory for QP and the NDP. And then in the 2018 election, if this is decided before then, and I'm not sure it will be, but if it is, then the NDP can say, look, the Liberals broke the law and, and sold this asset right from under you and, and you know, Vote, vote against them. So there is a court case, but at the end of the day, this ends up being a political decision. It's a political, this is a political decision. It's a political decision. story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's do, uh, we got this clip of Jagmeet Singh ready to go here? Let's do that. Here's the deputy leader of the NDP talking about this story. Roll it, please. I understand what QP is doing. It makes a lot of sense that they're upset, they're frustrated, and they want to bring a legal action. Maybe this lawsuit um, alleging wrongdoing will finally give the Premier another opportunity to do the right thing and say it's time to pause and stop the fire sale of Hydro One. Okay, the deputy leader of the NDP, the leader of the Ontario PC party. Is there any indication that this lawsuit will delay the government's plans to sell the remaining 30% of Hydro One that they have planned to sell? No, no. Now both uh, Jagmeet Singh and Patrick Brown are lawyers, so they they're better tuned than maybe we are on 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 how this one will play out in court. Um, but no, I don't think uh, I think the government feels very confident uh, in in this. And frankly, it hasn't. I don't think it's been as 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 big a political issue as maybe the NDP and the Tories had hoped. You it hasn't, said that, like, uh, I don't but, think, but I don't we hear electricity a, prices all the time. Electricity prices, yes. Privatization, no. I mean, it hasn't huh. helped the NDP. It didn't help the NDP in the by-election in Scarborough Rouge River, mm -hmm. uh, where they should have done better than they did. They had a good candidate. Uh, 
and they still finished third. Um, they finished second, yes, in Niagara West Glanbrook, but a very distant second. So, and, and distant third in Ottawa Vanier. I'm not sure that it's 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 not doesn't seem to be a voting issue. People instinctively don't like it for for whatever reason, but I don't know if they're voting on it. We, we had an interesting column by, in the paper today by Rick Salutin saying how he pinpoints this as the moment that. Uh, Kathleen Wynne kind of lost her luster, and she's not jumped the progressive. The yeah, she jumped the shark. She's not the progressive that 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 he thought she was. And in, at the Liberal AGM a few weeks in, ago in Ottawa, she was talking a lot about, oh, people say I'm not who I, they thought I was, and I want to get back to that. So, I could see a scenario from her point of view stopping the remaining sale to do it for her own political benefit. But I don't think they're going to do that. But uh, I, I, I I I still do not understand why win proceeded with this because it, it's not just about the money there's something it's just a very strange well i, I mean it's against I, type I, pr I presume it's upfront money versus money yeah. in the long run right yeah. i mean if you own 100 percent of the company the dividend you're getting every year yeah. is big if you own 40 percent of the company the dividend you're getting every year is small i hear that given by critics who say we need more money coming into the treasury why are we selling off 60 percent of this company i do hear that What's the explanation for that? I, I don't get it because the government actually has a lot more money than, the, I mean, they're going to bounce the books next year, even with the accounting changes that the Auditor General is talking about that really do put the screws down a little bit. Yeah. But, they, you know, tax revenue is, 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 is going up. The low dollar, the uh, low oil prices, those are very good for Ontario. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Liberals will be able to bounce the books in, in next year and bounce the books the year after and go into an election in the black for the first time in forever. But... I still, I still do not understand why this four billion dollar net gain or whatever it is that they're getting from Hydro One, why it's been so. Because I, I wonder if if they've done more damage to Win's brand as a progressive. Hmm. I mean, you've got a lot of uh, left leaning voters who are very, very upset and feel betrayed by her for doing this because it's just, it's just not who they thought she was. <laughs> no, and she, she actually said it in those yeah, words yeah. at the Liberals' annual general meeting. However, there is this promise that has been on the books by the Liberal Party of Ontario for a very long time, and that promise is we will balance the books yeah. by next spring. And I want to know, they're taking the 8% yeah. retail sales yeah. tax of the HST off your hydro bill a every billion month. billion dollars that costs. That's a billion yeah. dollars. Uh, we know there are other uh, rate mitigation programs that are going on out there. I'm not sure what the total yeah. price tag on those is, but that's, again, more money being deprived of the Treasury. Uh, I mean, I presume... The sale of 60% of Hydro One is absolutely crucial to their ability to balance the books next spring, I presume. But you yeah. tell me if it, it isn't. It is. And, and uh, Stephen LeClaire, the financial accountability officer, has made that point that this is, they are, and both uh, opposition parties have, have criticized the government for this, saying, look, you're, you're basically uh, selling the furniture to pay the, pay the heating bill. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, the, the Libs claim, no, it's just a short-term thing, and then after that, we'll, we'll still be in balance afterwards. They're, but they're, gonna, they're, they're hoping to balance the budget by, by a growing economy, not by mm -hmm. a sell-off of assets. But this is, again, this speaks to, I don't know if this, if this is worth the $4 billion in headaches, in net headaches that they're getting from it. I, I, don't, hmm. I don't know. It does give the opposition a kind of a stick to beat them with, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and they are doing that. Of course. And because if people are worried about their electricity rates, there's really nothing government can do to, to stop soaring electricity rates. It doesn't matter who's in power. They're going to go up, supply and demand. Hmm. But uh, if I'm an opponent of the Liberals, I can say, well, you know what? They've made a mess of the electricity system with green energy policies that are all over the map and these wind turbines that are everyone. We don't like them in our fields, blah, blah, blah. And, now, and, then, and, and by the way, they're, they're privatizing Hydro One, and that's a, that's a tangible thing they're doing, and I'm, it must be to blame for the raising, hmm. rising rates. Even though it isn't, hmm. it's an easy thing to blame them. we got about a minute and a half left, and let me do another analogy from history and see whether that works here. Uh, I, th I think I recall several years ago, Dalton McGuinty, when he was premier, spent about $400 million bucks, I think, of public money to repatriate what had been privately owned MRI clinics because he wanted them in public hands. If the Liberals continue to sell off the remaining 30% of this company so that it is 60% privately owned, <clears throat> and then there's a change in government in the next, after the next election, can you imagine a scenario whereby the Conservatives will say, we campaigned against this, we believe Hydro One should be held majority by the province, we're going to spend billions buying these shares back? Yeah, no, I don't you think so. You can't see that. I can't see that because I think that the political price will have been paid. So, the, the, I mean, 
I actually, I'm not sure that the neither that either the New Democrats or the Conservatives would would make that much of a change if they won power in two years' time or a year and a half's time. Because I think that it's it would be very expensive to buy back that majority share, billions and billions of dollars, mm -hmm. and not for a really uh, a tangible benefit people would see right away. Whereas the MRI clinics, relatively small, a 400 million dollars thing. And that was something that McGinty had promised in the 2003 election. Because yeah. remember, Eves was criticized for this privatization, even though people were getting actually better MRI services. But let's not let the facts get in the yeah, way exactly, of ideology. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> we're not. A, I know we're in a post-truth yes. world, but let's fight it. Yes. Let's definitely, fight it, Robert Benzi. <laughs> okay, Rob. Thanks for coming thanks, in Steve. tonight. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.